Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and in today's video we're going to be talking about the future of drones. Now the immediate future of drones is where I want to go in this video. I want to talk about what's going to come out in 2022. So let's cast our minds slightly into the future and make some predictions of what we can expect in the consumer and potentially the commercial space for drone pilots and drone operators all over the world. So if you're new around these parts, make sure to subscribe to the channel to ensure that you keep up to date with all the latest and greatest news in the drone world. And I've made it my mission around here to empower tech enthusiasts to unlock their creative potential with technology. We do have a few really exciting announcements coming out very soon. So the first thing is the Mavic 3 from DJI. Now this drone is going to be insane. It's going to have a flight time of 46 minutes. So that's kind of what I'm expecting from 2022. We're going to see drones with a significantly improved flight time. Now 46 minutes is insane. You're not going to be getting 46 minutes. You'll probably be getting around 40 minutes, but still that's a massive improvement. You know, like the drones I've been testing from DJI, I'm getting maybe 25 to 28 minutes, probably around that time frame. Nothing more than that. You're not getting 30 minutes yet. But the fact that they have bumped it to about a 40 minute flight time for the average consumer, that is insane. And by the looks of it, a lot of other drone manufacturers are going to follow that trend as well to really increase and improve battery life on drones. The next thing we can expect from the Mavic 3 is two cameras. So we're going to get the telephoto lens and we're also going to be getting a wide angle lens as well. The wide angle lens is actually going to have a mechanical shutter, which is what we saw in the Phantom range, which was the one thing that made the Phantom range stand out over the Mavic range. So the fact that the Mavic 3 is going to have a mechanical shutter, it almost defeats and makes the Phantom obsolete. So again, another prediction for next year in the consumer space is drones are going to be getting smaller, more compact and all of them are going to kind of fall into that folding space, which we've already been seeing for the last couple of years now. But it's clear to me that the Phantom range has been completely abolished. DJI have just let go of it now. The other thing to mention about the Mavic 3, it's going to have a micro four thirds lens. So it's going to be remarkably good in low light. And it's just going to be such an amazing camera system to use. It does capture 5.2K video. Now that's interesting to me because the Air 2S can capture 5.4K video. So like a lot of people are going to be a little upset about that, but it's a micro four thirds lens. So that means it's going to allow more light in. It's also going to have adjustable aperture or variable aperture as they like to call it. So you're going to have a lot more control in that prosumer space, which is going to make it stand out over the Air 2S. And also the fact it's going to have 46 minutes of flight time is going to make it completely stand out over the Air 2S in all of its glory. Another thing to mention is that Autel Robotics, which is one of DJI's direct competitors, they're just about to announce a few different drones. Now we're going to see a new mini drone from them, which is going to be called the Autel Evo Nano. Interesting name. And the Nano is going to directly compete with the Mini 2 from DJI. So DJI haven't released their Mini 3 yet. And my prediction is that a lot of these drone companies are going to get into that mini space. That seems to be the smartest option for a lot of them. There's a lot of potential. There's a lot of money to be made in that space. And if one of these drone companies like Autel or Parrot or, you know, Fimi as well is another great company that have released a mini drone. If they can get into that space and capitalize on it and make a lot of money out of it, then they can then put that money into research and development and then increase and improve their production on other larger drones. So I think that mini drone space is going to see a lot of attention in 2022. The Evo Nano is going to have a lot of similarities to the Mini 2. It's going to have a flight time of 30 minutes, it's going to have 4K 30 FPS. It's also going to be a very similar form factor and it's going to weigh under 250 grams. But the one thing that's going to be different here is we're going to see a lot of obstacle avoidance built into the system here. Now, whether we're just going to see the one on the front, you know, the two sensors on the front, or we might see two on the front, two on the back. I don't know 100% just yet what we're going to see in terms of obstacle avoidance, but it's going to have sensors on it, which is something that the Mini 2 doesn't have. So it's already going to stand out over that. If they can add a tracking mode, that's then going to make it stand out a lot more over the Mini 2. 
and potentially they could carve a large portion of that market out for the Autel lovers. You know, there's a core community of Autel robotics lovers out there. And if they can really kind of capture a large market of the mini space or that nano space, then they're gonna be in a really good position to really innovate and push the drone space even further. Autel have already sent out an email detailing what we can expect from the Evo Nano series. And it's actually gonna come in two different models. So we're gonna have a model with a half inch sensor as well as a one over 1.2 inch sensor. So that's really exciting. And the fact that they're offering two versions of that nano drone is gonna be interesting. I'm also really curious to see if the change in the image sensor size is actually gonna change the weight and whether it still will be a sub 250 gram drone whether it will go over that we'll have to wait and see for that one the other thing is that they have confirmed it's actually got three-way obstacle avoidance so from what we can see in the photo they're showing us it's got front and rear but it's saying three-way obstacle avoidance so i wonder whether there'll be side sensors probably not though but three-way you would think would be one two and then either the sides or above or something like that but it's in the image we can see that it's clearly pointing forward and to the rear so i guess the main thing here is that a mini drone is going to have a really solid camera and it's going to have obstacle avoidance in three directions so you would hope that there would be an active track mode and then from there dji need to bring the heat with the mini 3 they need to have obstacle avoidance they need to have active track it needs to have an improved sensor, like an, an improved camera system and improved resolution as well. So who knows where that's gonna go, but it's exciting that we've got some competition in this space. It's definitely gonna advance the space a lot faster and it's a win-win for all consumers. Now we have a few more options. It's not just like, hey, what drone are you gonna buy? Well, DJI, right? There's no other drones out there. It's like, okay, now we've got options. We've got a few different competitors that are bringing the heat. Auto Robotics have also announced the Evo Light Series, and they're telling us that it's gonna have a few different options. So you can either have a sensor with one over 1.28 inches or a one inch sensor. So the one inch sensor is obviously gonna directly compete with the Air 2S. And then on top of that, it's gonna have a 40 minute battery life. That's insane, 40 minute battery life. That is like a big jump over the Air 2S. So again, they're really trying to compete here. They're trying to come in and really take the market by storm. There's nothing else that's really been announced here, but there was one thing that I saw online. It's actually gonna have a four axis gimbal. So depending on what model you pick up, the Evo Lite's gonna have a four axis gimbal. So I don't know whether that means that, like what is the fourth axis? That's gonna be interesting. Like it's obviously up, down, left, right, and then like the roll, and then what else? Like, I have no idea. So four axis, obviously three axis has been like the norm in the whole drone space, but a four axis gimbal is gonna innovate from Autel, as well as that 40 minute flight time, it's got that one inch sensor. So it's gonna be trying to compete with the Air 2S. It's trying to be a better offering than the Air 2S. And then obviously the Nano, the Evo Nano, is gonna try to compete directly with the Mini 2. So again, next year, I think we'll see a few more competitors getting into this space. We're gonna see improved battery life and we're gonna see a ton of these mini drones entering the market very soon. I mentioned before that Fimi are also getting into the mini drone space. They've got some really big promises over there. An amazing camera, it's got active track, it's got waypoints, it's got all of these amazing features and it's getting some decent reviews. So I think, again, that mini space is definitely gonna take off. But the next innovation that I'm curious to see where that leads to is from Parrot. Now, Parrot have been in the space, the drone space for a very long time, but they're bringing out the Anafi AI. Now, to me, this seems like they're targeting the commercial space. It's actually a 4G enabled drone. So that means that for commercial pilots who maybe want to inspect power lines or have you know, corporate jobs where they're going for an extended period of time and they don't have to stay in line of sight because they got permission to do that, a 4G connected drone would be remarkable. It almost gives you unlimited range. So imagine if you're going along a power line, you've got clear 4G connection the whole way down, you could just send that drone and just send it the whole way down. You don't have to worry about range because you've got a 4G enabled drone. Now that kind of falls away a little bit when you're in areas where 4G isn't that reliable then you might be having some issues with connection. And again, I don't know whether this is targeted at consumers as much as it's targeted at the commercial space, but the commercial drone applications are becoming more and more prevalent. More people are using drones for commercial applications and it's a big market to tackle now. So I think for Parrot, that's a smart play. They're definitely doing something different over there. 
and I'm keen to see what other drone manufacturers come out and try to tackle that commercial space as well. Are we gonna see more 4G drones entering the market? I think it's a very unique offering from Parrot and it's something that the commercial space is really gonna benefit from. Like the example I said before, if you could fly for an unlimited amount of time and inspect power lines or inspect, you know, whatever that may be, houses or businesses or whatever you're kind of looking into. If you're in the mining industry, for example, they've got to travel hundreds of kilometers. And if this drone has unlimited range and you have, you know, like a really solid 4G connection, then that actually opens up a world of options for pilots in that commercial space. Now, applications for consumers, maybe not so much. You've got to keep it in line of sight to be legally flying your drone. So a 4G connection with unlimited range, I don't know about that one. And like the 4G space, yeah, I don't know how cluttered it would be for a drone to be sending those signals. I don't know how that would look in like a consumer space if you're in a built up area. I would imagine that would be something that would be completely fine. You know, there are so many 4G connected devices around us and we still have solid connection on our phones. So I think it wouldn't be an issue but I think they're clearly targeting like the commercial space there. So will others get into that 4G space? Yeah, we might see others enter that space in 2022, but like I said before, I think DJI are really focusing on that consumer space and they really wanna tackle that space and you know keep their throne as the king of the consumer drone space. They've got a few other competitors now. They do have Autel Robotics, they do have Skydio, and you know, kind of transitioning into Skydio, They've got one of the more advanced tracking drones on the market. It's completely autonomous. You can literally just have your controller in your bag and it can do all of the work for you. Now that's amazing and extremely unique and a lot of people love it. It's great. And I would actually love to see from the Mavic 3 something similar to that where it actually has full autonomy, where it actually does have complete omnidirectional sensing. So there's sensors in every single direction looking all over and they've kind of a flat design with a dome. So it means it would have a lot more perspective, a lot more 360 degree sensing from all the sensors. So it's gonna give it that 360 degree sensing and active track opportunity. So that would mean that you could just put it into an autonomous tracking mode and the sensors are gonna do their jobs to make sure that you don't crash into anything. So I think that's something we'll definitely see more of as well as sensors are becoming cheaper and easier to manufacture and easier to implement into drones. I think we'll see more drones with just a ton of sensors on them with lots of tracking capabilities. The other thing that I think we might see is another innovation in the drone space. So something really unique that we haven't seen. Now all of these specs and features are really exciting. We're getting improved cameras, we're getting more sensors, we're getting better battery life. All of that's amazing and I'm extremely excited to see what 2022 has to offer. But now that we've got more competitors in the space, they are doing all they can to stand out, you know, and to have something that really is unique and offers something that consumers want is going to bring in a lot of money, a lot of eyes to their brand. And I think one thing that I've been waiting on for a while now is a drone that is weatherproof. So that means that you can fly your drone through the rain and capture very unique perspectives that you couldn't get from any other device. You know, there are very limited waterproof drones out there or weatherproof drones, and they're not the major competitors that are doing that. You know, there are military drones out there that can do that. There are these amphibious drones that can land in the water, turn into like a submarine and then come out of the water. And that's all well and good, but a lot of them don't really advance in terms of their camera or their battery quality. So to have a larger player like Autel, Skydio, Parrot or DJI, Coming up with like a weatherproof drone or a waterproof drone for that matter would be remarkable and would offer something very unique that consumers haven't actually seen just yet. So I guess that's what we're going to see from next year's drone lineup. We're going to see even more fierce competition. We're going to see a ton of these mini drones entering the market. I think we might see other 4G enabled drones coming through. That would make a lot of sense. I think DJI really have to dominate that mini space with the Mini 3. So next year, I would expect them to drop it early next year, like quarter one, 2022. If they don't release it by the end of this year, then we're going to see it early next year. And again, they have to dominate because there's a lot of fierce competition now. And that's money, that space, that mini space is money because a lot of consumers who are starting out in the drone space, they wanna get something that's capable and affordable. And a mini drone is exactly that. It's a capable, affordable mini drone.
So to me, I'm really interested to see what happens moving forward because now DJI have actually lost a bit of their market share. They've got direct competition now that's actually dominating, like Autel are doing some really interesting things. You know, Skydio have got a drone that has definitely blown them out of the water with its tracking and Parrot are doing something very unique with their 4G drones. And now we've got other competitors entering the market regularly. So I think for DJI, they kind of need to stand out with a bold statement moving forward. So I think we will see something unique and interesting from them. Another thing that I've been wondering about as well is like a 360 degree camera. Is that going to come out on a drone? You know, I see so many people, I've even done it myself, where I've mounted a 360 degree camera on a drone. Really unique perspective, you know? And if there was some way for them to enable that, where there's like a 360 degree camera underneath or somewhere, whether there's a camera on the front, camera on the back, and then it creates this unique 360 degree perspective, Maybe that's something we'll see as well. Maybe we'll see like an entire new range of drones coming out, but I'd love to know in the comments below, what do you wanna see? What are we missing in the drone world? What are you excited to see next year? And yeah, any other thoughts about drones? I would love to know in the comments below. I'll talk to you down there and I'll see you in the next video. Peace guys.